So today is February 14th, Valentine's Day. And recently I was thinking about what kind of special video I could do for Valentine's Day. And that's when I thought, huh. Why not rank the love interests? Romance isn't really a major theme in Assassin's Creed, aside from Unity, but it is still rather important for some of these characters, and a lot of the protagonists do have love interests. Except for Connor, his only love interest is the mission. Need something, darling? No. Well, and I guess Basim and Shay as well. While other protagonists like Eivor and the Demigods have way too many to include them all in a ranking video, so to keep things simple, I'm just going to include the most important love interest from each of those games. It is still a little complicated though, because whether or not a character is a love interest in Valhalla and Odyssey really depends on your choices, but you get the idea. I'm just talking about the main entries as well, not the spin-offs, books, or anything. I know a lot of these protagonists have had other love interests in some of that other content, but we're just going to be focusing on the games. So, happy Valentine's Day, and for those of you that don't have a Valentine today, you're getting something better. A Master Assassin video. <laughs> yeah. Alright, anyways, you may be wondering what I'll be ranking these love interests based on, and it's a variety of things. How's their chemistry and relationship with the protagonist? What sort of development or impact do they have on the main character? Their general likability? And are they a good fit for the protagonist? And of course, as always, this is just my personal opinion. I know how people can get when it comes to these fictional video game romances. I mean, Triss versus Yennefer in The Witcher 3 is like one of the most heated debates in all of video games. So let's not get too worked up over it. It ain't that serious. This is for fun. But uh, other than that, let's get into the rankings. Alright, so coming in last place at number 10, I have Ranvi from Valhalla. This one is just wrong for so many reasons, but the most obvious of which is whether you choose male or female Eivor, it doesn't matter. This is your brother's wife. I mean, that should be reason enough to probably not pursue this romance option. Of all the potential romance options in Valhalla, I do believe Ranvi has the biggest role in the story, so that's why she's in this ranking. As a character, I'm not really the biggest fan of her hers either. Not that I hate her or anything, but she just feels kind of bland to me. And uh, again, she's Sigurd's wife, which is just all sorts of wrong. Kind of freaks me out that she looks like a knockoff version of Cassandra too, I'm not gonna lie. So even though the romance stuff feels very tacked on in Valhalla, you're still better off choosing pretty much anyone but Ranvi. Next, at number 9, I'm gonna go with Odessa from Odyssey. Now, to be completely honest, I'm not too familiar with the romance options in Odyssey. I didn't even do any of them when I played the game initially, and I don't remember too much about Odessa, but I feel like she's one of, if not the most popular love interest, and she does even show up in Cassandra's missions in Assassin's Creed Nexus, although maybe I should have put the old lady on here instead. Again, I really can't put Odessa higher than this, I feel like, because her screen time is limited to a few quests, and none of the romances in Odyssey actually have any impact on the main story or Alexios and Cassandra. It almost just feels like fan service, to be honest. Although you've got to give it up to the writers for this A-tier flirty dialogue. <laughs> you get straight to the point, don't you? I'll show you how to the point I can get. <laughs> kill, me, kill me now. <laughs> I know a lot of Odyssey fans like Odessa, but I don't really see how I could put any of the love interests from Odyssey any higher than this, since they have such little impact on the actual main plot. At number 8, I'm going with Henry Green, who is of course the love interest of Evie Fry. Now, unlike the last two, this relationship and dynamic is actually important to the plot and Evie's character, as she learns that she can be an assassin and have a life with a meaningful relationship like her parents did. This romance plot does actually push the narrative and help develop Evie. Their blooming relationship is one of the main focuses of Evie's storyline in Syndicate. With all that said, I don't find Henry to be very interesting, so I personally wasn't really that invested in him and Evie's romance, and the way it all wraps up felt pretty cliche and predictable to me. I know a lot of people like this relationship and Henry as a love interest, power to ya, but compared to some of the others in this series, I feel a lot of them are more interesting and well written. 
The next one was tough for me. I kept going back and forth between a few different characters, but ultimately I'm going to go with Caroline from Black Flag at number seven. In Caroline's defense, she doesn't get a lot of screen time, and when she does, it's solely in flashbacks, usually arguing with Edward. I do feel bad for her because Edward definitely screwed up quite a bit, promised he'd be back in two years, that didn't happen, and to make matters worse, he left not knowing she was pregnant and had to give birth and raise their daughter on her own until she passed in 1720. Obviously, Edward didn't know he had a daughter, but it's still just a really sad situation. Despite Caroline's limited appearance in the game though, her character and presence is still extremely important to the story of Black Flag and Edward's character. And it's not that Edward didn't love or care about her, but he refused to go back to her empty-handed and still poor. He wanted a better life for them, only he didn't realize he already had everything he needed. And that's part of his whole arc in Black Flag. It's too bad we didn't get to see more of Edward and Caroline's life together prior to him deciding to set off on this journey, but even with Caroline only being in a select handful of scenes, her character is still very important and her presence is felt throughout the story as Edward breaks his promise to her. Ezio has more love interests than any character in the series. Well, assuming you don't count all the ones from Odyssey and Valhalla. Again, we are just focusing on his most important love interests, starting with Katrina at number 6. Katrina is a fun character, she's got a big, loud, fiery personality, she's got good chemistry with Ezio, and she is a big part of his journey and story in both AC2 and Brotherhood. The reason she's not higher on this list is because I always got the sense that Ezio cared way more for her than she did for him. She even admitted in Brotherhood that she was with him only to get support from Monteregioni in the fight against the Borgias, which she likely would have gotten anyway. I do think she cared about him and there were some feelings there, but she seemed to view it more as a beneficial, casual relationship for fun and politics rather than love. Because I do think Ezio loved her, and he seemed rather sad when he realized she may not have felt the same. She's of course not even in Revelations because she died a few years before that, and this relationship could just have never happened because Katrina was a real figure in history, and as we all know, Ezio isn't, even if we badly want him to be. At number 5, we have another one of Ezio's love interests, and that's Christina. I think Christina is a super underrated character in the Ezio games. Some people don't realize just how important she is to Ezio's story, and a lot of people wouldn't know if they didn't play her missions in Brotherhood. She was Ezio's first love, and unlike Katrina, she actually loved him back. And even though we only briefly see her at the start of AC2, the added context and depth to their relationship in Brotherhood makes her a far more fleshed out character. These missions with Christina wouldn't have fit the structure of AC2's story, so I'm glad they decided to add them as flashback missions in Brotherhood. I also really like the explanation that we don't see these missions until later or see Ezio talk about her much because he's trying to suppress these memories and the trauma associated with them. I also absolutely love their first interaction, it was hilarious. Very rarely do you see Ezio struggling to talk or say the right words like the rest of us. What? What? Why are you just standing there? Oh, uh, um, because I wanted to ask you something, which is, what's your name? <laughs> Not one you'll ever need to make use of. That's better, I wasn't ready. I was planning on being really charming fun. I just have a second chance. <laughs> Christina really cared about Ezio, she helped him bury his father and brothers, she even wanted to marry him, but he left on his quest to avenge his family, and while he did invite her to come with him, she likely would have just ended up being alone at Monteregioni for years as Ezio hunted down the Borgias. It definitely felt like a case of right person, wrong time, as Christina would eventually marry someone else because her family forced her to, even though she still loved Ezio, and then she tragically died years later 
in his arms, revealing she still wore the necklace he gave her 22 years prior. What makes it even more sad is Christina was one of the few people left from Ezio's life before his family was executed and his life completely changed. And with Christina's death, it's like the last piece of who Ezio was before he became an assassin went with her. We can assume her death also hit Ezio particularly hard, considering he repressed the memories of her and never mentioned her again. Christina's presence in these games may be very small, but her lasting impact on Ezio and his character was huge. For number four, I'm going to be going with Altair's main love interest and eventual wife, Maria. Unfortunately, Maria's screen time in the games is extremely limited, and most of her story and relationship with Altair is explained through spin-off games and the novels, which is one of the main reasons why she isn't in the top three, but she's still up there for me with the best love interests in the series, despite such limited screen time. You see her and Altair meet briefly in AC1, which has to be the best story story they could tell their kids. I would see your eyes before you die. I sense you expected someone else. What sorcery is this? Ah yes, love at first sight. She also appears very briefly in AC2 and is in one memory of Revelations. Not a lot at all, but she was still very important to Altair's story and life. She was originally a Templar, but eventually turned to the Assassins once she realized the Templar's goals and ideals weren't beneficial to humanity, and she and Altair were married and had two children at Masyaf Castle. They were together for 33 Three years, making it the longest and probably most successful romance of the series, and it was likely to go on longer if not for Maria's tragic death. Again, we see very little of their relationship in the games, but they seem to be very loyal and compassionate towards each other. We saw in Revelations that Maria kind of keeps Altair in check and makes sure what he's doing is for the good of the Brotherhood, and that ultimately led to her own death. We're not sure of the full extent her death had on Altair, because we we don't really get to see much of it, but you don't quickly get over the death of someone you've been with for 30 plus years, so it's pretty safe to say it impacted Altair heavily. Again, I considered putting Maria higher up in the rankings because of how great her and Altair's relationship was, but she just doesn't appear in the games enough for me to put her higher than number 4. At three, I'm going with Elise from Assassin's Creed Unity. Arno and Elise's romance and dynamic is the main focus of Unity's story, and it's really the only game in the series to be a full-on love story. So naturally, Elise is very important to the narrative and Arno as a character. The story does follow quite a few tropes with the classic Romeo and Juliet-esque forbidden love, with Arno being an assassin and Elise a Templar, sort of similar to Altair and Marie. Maria, actually, except Elise doesn't convert to being an assassin. They'd also pretty much been in love since they were kids, as Arno was taken in by the De La Serres after the death of his father. And similar to Romeo and Juliet, this is a tragic love story. I think Unity does a very good job of demonstrating in a lot of ways why Elise is bad for Arno and why they don't work together. It starts from the very beginning of the game, where Elise entices Arno into chasing her at Versailles, as Arno disobeys his father's instructions to wait for him, which actually leads to his father's death, as he was waiting for Arno to come back when he was assassinated by Shay. And that perfectly represents and foreshadows a bulk of the story, and why I think it's such a good opening scene for Arno and Elise, and perfectly represents their relationship. Arno spends a majority of Unity's story chasing after Elise, and as a result, bad things happen. Rather than delivering the life-saving letter to Francois de La Serre, Arno decides to go to the party to see Elise. As a result, Francois de La Serre dies, and Arno is blamed for his murder. Even once Arno becomes an assassin, he, without authorization from the Brotherhood, brings Elise into the middle of their headquarters to offer her assistance, leading to Balek poisoning Mirabeau, and as a result, Arno being forced to kill him. While we're initially led to believe that Arno wants vengeance for Francois de La Serre, hence why he takes so many rash actions, like like assassinating targets without permission from the council, or going completely rogue and disobeying their orders, which leads to him being exiled from the assassins I might add, the real reason he did all of those things was for Elise. He even says so himself. I thought we wanted the same thing. What I wanted was you. 
Arno's love for Elise and his constant need to chase after her cost him nearly everything. And while she loved Arno as well, to Elise there were more important priorities, like revenge. As in the end, she chooses revenge over Arno, and Arno is left chasing after her one last time. It's a really tragic but well-written romance, and obviously Elise's death has an enormous impact on Arno. As in Dead Kings, we initially see him being more selfish and unempathetic, but eventually he learns to move on from Elise and get over her death, where he can finally start to be the assassin and person he was always meant to be. I know I said part of the criteria for ranking these love interests was how good they were for the protagonists and their relationship, but Elise is so important to Arno's story and growth, their relationship is literally the focus of the story, and of all the love interests in Assassin's Creed, Elise not only is one of the most important, but she quite literally drives the story forward. So even though her and Arno's relationship was bound to end poorly, her role as a love interest is paramount to the game. Hence why I'm placing her at number 3. Now, the second best love interest in Assassin's Creed, in my opinion, is Sophia from Assassin's Creed Revelations, Ezio's final love interest. Christina was the first love, Katrina was the one that would just never work out, and Sophia is Ezio's final, more mature love. Sophia has a very likable, kind-hearted personality, she helps Ezio with whatever he asks, and every scene between these two is just so sweet and wholesome. Ezio's interactions with Sophia are very different from Christina and Katrina, which again, I chalk up to him being older and more mature. He's very generous and understanding with her, and she was finally the one that Ezio was willing to settle down with and retire his assassin life for. Something Christina wanted him to do earlier, but he just wasn't in that stage of his life yet. They were of course married and had two children, as we saw a brief glimpse into their peaceful life in Assassin's Creed Embers, and in Ezio's final letter, he even mentioned how Sophia was the driving force keeping him alive. Her reaction when she sees Ezio on that bench is heartbreaking, but for obvious reasons, Sophia had a massive impact on Ezio's life and his character development, finally giving our beloved protagonist the peaceful, happy life he deserved after decades of bloodshed. And finally, at number one, I'm going with the co-founder of the Brotherhood itself, Aya, also known as Amunet. Bayek and Aya's relationship in AC Origins is one of the main focuses of the story, as Aya is crucial to Bayek's story and the story of Assassin's Creed as a whole. Her and Bayek's chemistry is undeniable, and their relationship to me, more so than any other in the series, feels so real. I attribute that to the performances by Abu Bakr Salim, and Alex Wilton Reagan, who bring so much life and energy to these characters. You can feel the love Bayek and Aya have, and while they were certainly right for each other, the universe had other plans, unfortunately. As Origins is less so a love story, and more of a prolonged heartbreak and inevitable departure between Bayek and Aya. Obviously, the death of their son hit them both really hard, as they both pursued vengeance by killing those responsible for his death, but even then, you still see these brief moments of joy and happiness between Bayek and Aya, even with all the guilt, pain, and sorrow of their son's death weighing on them. I think I was more invested in their relationship than out of any other in the series, and the sad ending of them deciding to put the betterment of humanity and the world above their own happiness was so well written and sad. Their breakup quite literally birthed the Brotherhood, and even after that, in the Hidden Ones DLC, there was still such a sense of sadness and longing to their interactions, wanting to be together, but knowing they can't. However, they were eventually buried together, which may imply that they did eventually reunite, or one of them chose to be buried near the other. Guess we'll never know since we never got a sequel, Ubisoft! Aya, of all the love interests in the series, is the most instrumental to the overall lore, and the only one on this list you actually get to play as. So with that, and all these reasons in mind, is why I believe Aya to be the best love interest 
interest in Assassin's Creed. Obviously, again, this is just my opinion, but in one of my other videos, I saw comments hating on Aya, and I'm not gonna stand for that. But of course, you're all free to leave your own rankings down in the comments. I'm not gonna lie, this was actually a lot more difficult than I thought it'd be. I kept going back and forth on some of these rankings, but I am quite confident in this list. Still, I'm curious to see what you guys think. I would like to make some honorable mentions as well, because there were some other flirtatious-like relationships for other characters in the series that I don't quite think classified as being love interests, like Hope from Rogue, for example. It was quite subtle, but there was definitely an implied romantic tension there between her and Shay. Waste your words. Shay abhors improvement as much as cats abhor leashes. Hey. A pity. The boy has so much potential. But so little discipline. All right. All right. If not for Shay's turn, maybe something would have come of it. I actually saw a hilarious quote by someone too, saying that if Shay ended up with hope, he could say, I don't need luck, I have hope. Oh god, that would have been gold. I'll give another honorable mention to Lucy Stillman. Again, she ended up being killed by Desmond. Oh, wait a minute, that's a weird coincidence. Both of these characters were killed by the protagonist they had feelings for. Anyways though, there was some romantic banter between Desmond and Lucy in Brotherhood, and Sean did say that Lucy admitted to him that she liked Desmond. But I just felt for both Hope and Lucy that it was just so subtle and nothing ever came of it that they don't really classify as love interests. Let me know what you guys think. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and considered subscribing to the channel if you're new. Special thank you to my members for supporting me. And other than that, thanks for watching and happy Valentine's Day, assassins. Well, unless of course you hate Valentine's Day, in which case, well, oh, I got nothing witty to say say just go goodbye